I never really explained this last time, but a sector gate is just a door that closes off of the water. It's called a sector gate because it's in the shape of a sector or like a slice of a pie. Um, this particular one is to stop a storm surge from coming up by you signet and flooding, causing, causing flooding problems on the west bank of New Orleans. So the sector gate will stop a storm surge, but the problem is whenever there's weather that would cause a storm surge, there's also a lot of rain, and rain would build up on the protected side of the sector gate. So the pump station is installed right next to it to pump local rainwater over the flood wall onto the flood side. So in this little video, we'll, or this little slide shows what it really is, we'll look at a building the foundation for the pump station. So to do this kind of work, you got to have a crane, and uh, you know, Traco is not going to cut it. You got to have a big crane. Picker is not going to cut it. So you take the plans, which are drawn to scale. You draw a scale model of a barge that you're going to put next to the TRS structure, and then you figure all your lifts and how far out they are and how heavy they're going to be, and then all the lifts that involve pile driving, you reduce the load chart by 25% because it's considered duty cycle and you pick what size crane you need. You don't want any bigger than you have to get because they're terribly expensive and they burn a lot of fuel. And you don't want one too small because then you'd shoot yourself in the foot. So uh, we ended up on the pump station TRS with a Cobalco 250 ton crane. There's two older Manitowas in the background sometimes. That's another contractor working across the bayou. It's not ours. So now the pile drivers have moved in and they started the um, process of putting in the sheet piles for the coffer dam. Um, this is a more traditional coffer dam. It's rectangular and it's not nearly as deep as the one for the uh, sector gate. So it looks like they just have some random piles out there in the water, but uh, there's some method to their madness. Um, the vertical piles are capped with a little horizontal and then the longitudinal, which is uses a straight edge to get the piles, the sheet piles all in a line. So these long H piles are their template and they drive the sheets as close as they can to the template. They have to pay attention to the lay length so when they get to the corner, the corner will be in the right spot. So as they work their way down, they, they have to uh, rework their original little supports, put them off to the side so they can drive straight through. Um, it's pretty easy pile driving as most jobs go and they worked all the way around and close in a, a rectangular coffer dam. The design for this coffer dam had us lower the water level on the interior once all the sheets, once it was closed up. About three and a half feet, I don't remember the exact measurement, and that's where the whaler was going to go. So we, uh, we pumped it out, or we were pumping on it constantly. Um, we got to that elevation. We put some brackets to hold up these big whalers because they're 48 inch by I think 480 pounds a foot or something like that. Um, this is not like something we decide. This is all in the structural drawing of the DRS that's been approved and stamped and everything. So we got the water level down. We put the big uh, whaler and then we added lots of reinforcing to support that whaler and lots of pin piles to support it in the vertical direction and it wasn't until all those were in that we were allowed to go ahead and excavate to our final depth which uh, was roughly half the depth of the sector gate TRS if I remember correctly. In lots of the photos you see piles just stuck out there and uh, there's a reason for that. They're a little tricky to get into the hammer from being on the ground. The uh, operator has two drums. Well he'll use two drums. He'll pick up the pile with one with a cable on it and then he has to get the hammer over the top um, while holding it with the cable and he's got to swing back and forth or lean the pile against something it's it's kind of tricky so once he gets them vertical he sticks them out in the mud and they stay vertical if he needs them again he can just reach out there and grab them um, yeah then he doesn't need two two drums he can just use one works he works out a lot better for him so to build this grid out there in the water, it was kind of time consuming. Um, for every horizontal beam, which is really an H pile, we'd have to drive two temporary pin piles, put a horizontal, weld it, set the beam in place, and then drive 
permanent pin pile in its proper location and this could all be done if you planned it right and once the permanent pin pile was in place you could weld off the horizontal to hold it up <clears throat> and then remove the temporary pin piles and the temporary cross members and move on to another one and once you got a whole bunch of them out there you could kind of uh kind of self-supporting you kind of just drop beams in place and weld them off again this is all design structure if the uh whalers are in the right place they won't hamper the pile drivers later on if the pin piles are in the right place they won't hamper the pile drivers later on um, it all worked out pretty good we got a good structural engineer but uh this like i say this is not guesswork this all has to go where it has to go so with the TRS complete and inspected by the engineer, um, time to start digging. Uh, again, we're using a clam bucket. This material was wetter than the material in the uh, sector gate coffer dam, probably because we're closer to the original bayou. So we removed a large part and it wasn't getting any stiffer. We ended up buying lots of sand and dumping sand in a huge pile in the corner putting a couple little pieces of equipment down there and, and just pushing it around. Um, some places the sand is probably three foot thick, some places not so much, but it gradually pushed the muck and the water to one side and it was uh, stiff enough to hold a track vehicle. You probably couldn't put a, a rubber tired uh, skid steer in there, but it held the tracks up. And when we got it sorta, of, well, when we got it to about a foot below where the stone is supposed to be we put a foot of stone in there for the pile drivers and for us to work on and we ended up with a, a good um, solid surface to work on dry everything lovely so about now the permanent piles have arrived um, they came in a barge directly from the mill which I'm not sure where that was but we weren't allowed to keep that barge so we had to unload it so the piles for the sector gate were put onto the crane barge since the red crane was no longer on it and the piles for the pump station were put wherever we could find a spot to put them uh, you can see there's some sheet piles sticking up out there in the middle those are cut off sheets those are to keep water from going underneath the structure uh, after it's poured you might notice that all the sheets and all the piles that are part of the permanent structure have been blasted and painted for like the top 10 or 11 feet except for the little part that embeds in the concrete and this is for uh, keep them from corroding at the level that where there may be oxygen in the um, I don't know the part under the structure and once you get down so deep the engineers are not worried about it corroding because there's no oxygen down in that muck so only a part of them are painted and we threw together a little platform just to be able to get to the excavation and look over the uh, Look over the edge it's just uh and it's so important to be able to come and go and see what's going on and just like that the stone is in place and piles are driven and i don't have any other photos i wish i could go back but it's been 13 years i can't go back and get better pictures but anyway the piles are being driven um they are driven with an impact hammer not a vibratory hammer there is a leads as it's called it's a steel cage three-sided the hammer is in the leads and can go up and down but it can't come out and the pile is set uh, into the leads it's locked at the bottom so it can't come out and there's a hood on the bottom of the hammer that fits over the top of the pile and once it's all in there then the leads are battered or driven straight whatever the um, specifications call for and they're driven to grade now these are friction piles not bearing piles if this was New York City, they'd be driven down to bedrock and then, then you stop, but there is no bedrock. So these are um, roughly 130 feet. I'm not sure, they, they probably vary. And they're driven to grade. And the whole premise is, if you have enough of them down in the ground and they're all stuck to the sticky mud, that nothing's gonna move. And for the most part, it works. So with all the piles in place the sheets in place and the uplift anchors welded on uh, the deep foundation guys go away their surveyor goes away our surveyor comes in first thing he does is mark uh, 
bottom of the finished slab grade on all the steel and we pour a dry bottom concrete to that mark so when we set rebar and forms and embeds it's all set on six inches of concrete um, we, dirt, dirt in the rebar is not acceptable having a rebar shift while you're pouring is not acceptable having embeds move or anchor bolts move because of the weight of the concrete on our soft subsoils is not acceptable so core jobs around here pretty much 100 percent they get a six inch dry bottom and from there we have a, a stable sound surface to build on and uh, set the forms on brace off of and keep everybody's feet out of the out of the water when it rains and with the dry bottom installed uh, forms are set for the slab I can't remember how thick this was probably 30 inches <clears throat> the rebar is tied by a subcontractor we refer to them as iron workers they bid these jobs by the ton and every time they finish a section or a slab they go pull the dray tickets from the trucking companies to find out how many tons were in there and that's how they get paid um, on this particular TRS design after we finished pouring the structural slabs we poured 12 inches of unreinforced concrete between the slabs and the sheet piles you can see a 2 by 12 bolted up against the sheet piles in some of the pictures that was our guide and then that 12 inches of concrete supports the sheets so that we can remove all of the uh, rangers and whalers or the or the um the horizontal braces going back to the 24 inch uh, whaler and most of the pin piles fell outside of the slab because it was designed well i think there were a couple that were inside the slab that we had to do some sophisticated patching to make sure water wouldn't come up through there but uh yeah so now it's time to set plates and get ready to put up wall forms and since the whole structure now has a concrete floor um, keeping it dewatered was simple. We have a, a little bitty uh, hydraulic submersible in the hole and a spare um, two inch electric pump in the hole and uh, we never had any more flooding. So uh, I think this is a good time to wind this one up. I didn't get many comments on the last one but I got more likes per view than normal so I'm doing this one. Um, I hope you like it. Please comment. Let me know.